This is a short story of life history of Malaysian pioneer botanist Muhammad Hanif Kupipici, 1872-1930. Muhammad Hanif Kupipichi was a great man who devoted his entire life to botany and was crucial to the historical development of Penang Botanical Garden. He is a role model of a true botanist and a great naturalist who mastered botanical knowledge. He was gifted with extraordinary skills and was highly dedicated to his work. He was not a mere collector but rather a breeder of plants, particularly orchid. Muhammad Hanif bin Kupi Piche was born in Penang on the 2nd of November 1872. He was a son of a successful businessman from India, Kupi Piche, but the late Muhammad Hanif chose to be a botanist in total contrast to his siblings who followed their father's footsteps. He had eight children with two boys and six girls. He began his formal education at the prestigious Penang Free School in 1878, the first Malay student to enter the school. At the time, Malaysia was still under British colonial rule. His education equipped him with the mastery of English language, allowing him to converse freely with the English officials. Then, he pursued his study to the secondary level until he passed the senior Cambridge exam. Muhammad Hanif started to develop his passion in botany when he was accepted as a botanical apprentice at the Penang Botanical Garden under the guidance of Mr. Charles Curtis on the 1st of July, 1890. His dedication ensured his place as an overseer at the age of 21. Muhammad Hanif was promoted to the rank of field assistant in 1917 and deputized as the assistant curator of the Singapore Gardens before his retirement in 1926. Muhammad Hanif's position as a chief worker lasted for 15 months. In 1910, the Botanical Garden was taken over by the Penang Council which at that time decided to build a reservoir to supply drinking water to Penang residents. During this period, the garden was left on its own without British management. Muhammad Hanif, however, remained committed in keeping the garden alive and in order. During his service to the Gardens Department of Straits Settlements in 1890 to 1926, he made great efforts and contributions to the living collections and plant databases. He went on many expeditions to many parts of Malay Peninsula such as Kedah, Perak, Langkawi and other places including the state of Pahang, Johor, Kelantan and even into Siamese territory. Most of his collection was collected from places of high altitudes, which are hills and mountains. At a time when there was no highways, no smooth dark roads, this man explored many jungles and scaled countless peaks in the Malay Peninsula to collect thousands of plant specimens used later as a database for the Malaysian plant species. His passion and devotion made him an expert in identifying plants, especially plants with medical potential. Collecting herbarium was a part of his hobby, or more appropriately, his obsession.
leaves and flowers were dried chemically and kept on a piece of card. Intricate details about the plants such as habitats, heights and the locations where they were found were recorded. He loved collecting orchids, ferns and ginger plants. All his efforts were not funded by the British. However, his uncompromising devotion to botany drove him to sacrifice his personal funds to carry on his work. Life was not always a bed of roses, even for this great man. In 1910, the British left the garden. With no money to pay the workers and the upkeep of the garden, he was forced to sell his house and land located in Manchester Road, all for the love of the garden, to generate funds to pay the wages of the workers. He moved to Kedah Road. This too was temporary as he moved again to ensure the upkeep of the garden. In all, he moved at least six times to maintain the garden. In the end, he sold his family's house and lived near Waterfall River. Only in 1926 did the British recognize his sacrifice. Because of his dedication, the British rewarded him with a house near the Waterfall River Junction, which still remains until today. At one time, Muhammad Hanif had been rewarded a piece of land at the former garden. He, however, did not accept this gift. He also refused to accept another piece of land located at Orchard Road, Singapore, rewarded by the Singaporean government. Till today, all his works and the reservoir can still be seen in good condition. He died in 1930. The late Muhammad Hanif was reported to possess some extraordinary skills. He was known to have the ability to identify medical plants and formulate medicine herbs. He would cut the herbs, usually leaves, stick, or bark, into small pieces and place them on a copper tray to dry under the sun. He washed the herbs while they were drying to see if birds would eat the herbs. This would indicate that the herbs were safe to eat and can be used as an ingredient to formulate a medicine. He was a strong swimmer. His swimming skills were prominently visible when he rescued an Indian worker who slipped from a steep cliff while trying to reach an orchid from a branch. Muhammad Hanif was also gifted in taming wild animals. There was a time when his expedition brought to a grinding halt by the presence of a tiger. It was told that he calmly took a stone and whispered an incantation before throwing the stone to the tiger. Miraculously, the tiger lay down to give way for Muhammad Hanif and his band of explorers to continue their expedition. There are several plant species which he collected on his own, named after him. 
activities include Dendrovium hanifiae reed, Eugenia hanifiae henderson, and Bulbophyllum hanifiae car. In 1950, 20 years after his death, a local plant genus Hanifia from the Ginger family was named after him by Haltom to commemorate the knowledgeable and competent plant person who devoted his life to Malaysian botany. Hanif successfully created a hybrid between the white scorpion orchid Arachnis hukiriana and the bright red Renantera coquinia, creating the hybrid which was named after him, Arantera Muhammad Hanif. During his days in Penang Botanical Garden as well in Singapore Garden, Hanif was fortunate to work with world renowned botanists such as Ridley, Burkill, Henderson, and Haltam. Arguably, the advancement in knowledge of the Malaysian botany would never have met strides had it not been for the contributions of Muhammad Hanif. Historically, Penang Botanical Garden began as a competitor to the Portuguese and the Dutch in the quest for domination of the spice trade in Selat Melaka. The West Indies government have developed their own botanical garden in St. Vincent while East Indies Company built theirs in India. The Dutch built theirs at the Colombo Botanical Garden. The introduction of new plants such as rubber trees in Malaya, nutmeg and clove in Penang became the main purpose of the opening of botanical garden in Singapore and Penang. Botanical garden portfolio was founded in 1884 when Mr. Charles Curtis was the first curator. At the time, the main objective of this garden establishment was to plant commercial crops and undertake research on these selected plants. Hanif's contributions towards the development of botanical garden were highly commendable. His achievement in collecting plants throughout the Malay Peninsula and replanting them in the botanical garden, preserving them while planting fruits, flowers and herbs was no little feat. As the ultimate show of love and devotion, his sacrifice in maintaining the garden from 1910 to 1921 from his personal resources was unrivaled. Many of his efforts and contributions remain obscure, arguably either deliberately or otherwise. His sacrifices were never highlighted. The closest he had ever got was a few words in the obituary page saying that he was involved in the botanical garden between 1910 to 1921. Muhammad Hanif's contributions too were not perpetual in any books published during those years. Shortly after his death, the same publication, albeit a newer edition, no longer carries his name. The new edition had one less author. Although he had contributed a lot to the world of plant kingdom, he had never asked for any rewards nor received any gifts. This great man is a source of inspiration for eminent botanists and indeed a pioneer Malaysian botanist where his contribution is beyond comparison.